Hi everyone. In this video, I am going to provide you with an overview of the statement of cash flows. So first off, what exactly is the statement of cash flows? Well, that's a financial statement that shows the change in cash balance from the prior year to the current year. So if you think about your other financials, you think about a net, uh, an income statement. An income statement shows you revenue and expense, and you take the difference, and that's net income. But net income and, and revenues and expenses, they don't necessarily align with cash in and cash out um, under U.S. GAAP. And so we, we present this separate um, um, statement that shows you cash in, cash out. If you think about the balance sheet, the balance sheet lists cash as a current asset and shows you the balance of cash as of the balance sheet date, but it doesn't provide you any further info about cash. So once again, the statement of cash flows kind of fills the gap by telling you, well, what actually happened in cash? What cash came in? What cash went out? So the statement of cash flows basically fills a void in the information about cash that your income statement and your balance sheet don't really give investors. Now, why do we need it other than the points that I just made that it kind of fills this gap? Well, it shows investors whether or not the company has the ability to actually generate its own cash. This is what we call the operating cash flows. Um, when you think about it, a business needs cash to operate. A business can get cash from multiple places. It could sell ownership to investors. It could borrow money or it can generate its own cash through successful operations. And therefore, it helps to know, hey, is this business able to actually generate its own cash? It shows the cash associated with company growth, what we call the investing cash flows. How much cash is going into or coming from, say, PP&E or investing in other companies, right? How much are you trying to grow your business? It shows the cash received from or paid to the creditors and investors, what we call the financing cash flows. So again, I told you cash can come and go to multiple sources. So the question is, where are you getting your money from? Are you generating it yourself through operations or are you potentially borrowing it or selling ownership in your company? That's what those financing cash flows can show you. And then lastly, one other thing the statement of cash flows does is it can reconcile changes in cash to net income. So remember what I said, the income statement, it doesn't show you cash, right? It shows you revenue and expense. But the statement of cash flows, if the company uses the indirect method, now there's two methods, but if they use the indirect method, then the statement of cash flows will actually show investors, hey, this was net income, and here's how we can reconcile the difference between net income and the, and, and the change in cash from um, year over year. All right, so here's kind of a visual to give you an example of what a statement of cash flows looks like. Um, every statement of cash flows is include a company header. So you see here a company header with company name, the name statement of cash flows, as well as the period covered. In this order, you are going to see the operating cash flows with a subtotal, the investing cash flows with a subtotal, the financing cash flows, with a subtotal. And you can see that in it, in this example over here. It says cash flows from operating activities. There's the subtotal. Cash flows from investing activities. There's the subtotal. Cash flows from financing activities. There's the subtotal. You're going to add all those subtotals together to show investors what the net change in cash was for the period. That's right here on our example. You're going to tell investors what your beginning cash balance was. That's right below that. And of course, when you add these two together, that will tell you what your ending cash balance is. That's right there. And your ending cash balance should match the ending cash balance that you're also reporting on your balance sheet. Now, one other topic to bring up with, re with respect to statement of cash flows is, is the idea of significant non-cash activities. So sometimes there are significant activities that occur within a company that you would assume on the surface must have involved cash. For instance, buying a building um, or um, uh, uh, purchasing some asset other than a building or, or something of that nature. And so if you have any of these significant activities and you did not spend cash on them, you want to disclose that to investors. You want to say, hey, we had these things that you might think were done with cash, but they weren't done with cash. And so 
Here I give you some examples. What if you buy an asset, but instead of cash, you issue stock? Or you buy an asset, but instead of cash, you issue debt? Or what if you convert some existing debt into stock, right? Because that could look like the debt got paid off, but you didn't really pay it off. Or what if you simply exchanged one asset for another? So, so exchange a piece of equipment for another piece of equipment or something of that nature um, where cash isn't involved. In the event of these, you have to tell investors about them so that they can, they can see, hey, these big things, they didn't involve cash. And so sometimes what companies will do is they will actually put these in a schedule right beneath the statement of cash flows. So they'll list the statement of cash flows as I showed you on the prior slide. And then right below that, they'll say significant non-cash activities. And they'll list any of those activities that they have. Companies alternatively have the option to simply create a note in the financial statements and to put this information there. Either way is acceptable. And I just want to point out here that um, dollar amounts for these transactions are typically just shown um, positive without parentheses um, because they're, they're neutral. They're not cash flows. And you may be saying, well, what am I talking about? Well, let's back up a minute. When we look at a statement of cash flows, what you will see throughout the statement is you will see a combination of dollar amounts without parentheses and then dollar amounts with parentheses. And when it comes to the statement of cash flows, all that's really saying is cash in, that's the ones without parentheses or a positive number, and cash out, the ones with parentheses or a negative number. So when it comes to significant non-cash activities because you didn't have cash involved, you typically just list what, what I'm gonna call a neutral number. What's the value of that transaction? There's no assumption that cash was in or out since it is a non-cash activity. All right, so that's it for your overview of the statement of cash flows. I did mention there are two different ways of doing the statement of cash flows. There's something called the direct method, something called the indirect method. But regardless of which method you do, the form that you saw in this presentation still applies. And I'll cover those different um, formats in other videos. All right, I hope you found this helpful, and I hope you join me for another video.